Hi, this is Josh from Brown Dog Gadgets, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own solar USB charger. It's pretty easy, and you'll be done in about 10 minutes. Before we build our charger, let's just double check we have all the parts that we need. You'll be needing five wires, four inches in length each, three black and two red, a small solar panel, a blocking diode, a switch, a lithium charge controlling board, a USB boosting circuit board, a 3.7 volt lithium battery, and some solder. Take a quick peek at your diode. Notice there is a black line on one end of the diode. That signifies that that is the negative side, and the opposite side of that is the positive side. Now the first step we're going to be doing is soldering the positive side to the positive terminal on the solar panel. Use the helping hand tool to hold the diode in place against your solar cell. Once everything is aligned, apply some heat from the soldering iron first for about three seconds, and then add some solder. You don't need a whole lot, just add a bit so that it flows over the diode and over the terminal on the solar panel. Grab one of your red wires. Twist the end of the wire around the negative side of your diode, as seen in the picture above. Twist the two of them together and make sure they're nice and secure. Like before, add some heat from your soldering iron to the wires. Then add some solder. As a general rule, you want to heat up the parts and add solder to the parts themselves, not so much the soldering iron. At this point, you want to snip off the excess legs of your diode. First kind of bend them out in a way that's easy to cut, and then snip them off. We don't need them at all, and at this point, they're completely useless. Using the same technique as before, use your helping hand to take a black wire and line it up with the negative terminal on your solar cell. Apply heat and apply solder, and get that hooked up nice and secure. Grab your top wooden plate, the one with a large hole in it, and run the wires from your solar cell through it. At this point, we'll need to do that to hook up the additional parts. The lithium charge controller board is the most important part in this entire project because everything hooks up to this board. The positive and negative hole on the left of the board, next to the USB port, are where our solar panel wires connect. Take one of the wires and run it through each of the holes, positive for red, negative for black, and we'll be soldering those into place. If you're having a hard time getting those two solar cell wires through the hole, thanks to the nice little tiny threads on the inside, use your fingers and twist them into place. If you really have to, snip off a couple little threads with your wire cutter if they're being too annoying. Use your helping hand to hold the board in place. Add heat to both the wire and the pad at the same time, and then add some solder. It doesn't take much. On the other side of your board, you'll find a B positive and a B negative. That is for battery positive and battery negative. We'll be attaching wires from our batteries to those two ports next. The battery has some extra shrink tubing on the end of the wires. You'll need to snip that off first and then strip away a little bit of the wire at the end. You only want to do about a fourth of an inch or so, too much, and it'll just be annoying to work with. Do the same thing that we did before and use the red wire from your battery to go through the B positive port and the black wire from your battery to go through the B negative port. Those are the two inside holes on this board. In general, don't let the wires from the batteries touch. That would be bad. Once again, use your helping hand to hold the board in place while you solder on the wires. 
Notice how my wire is in no way touching the pad next to it. If my wire is extra long and touching the other pads, that might cause a short circuit. So make sure that either one is pointed away from that pad next to it, or it's short enough that it's not going to touch the pad. Once you solder on both wires, you're finished using this lithium charge controlling board for a while. Again, I cannot stress how important it is that the wires from the battery pad area are not touching those two outside pads in any way whatsoever. Use a loose black wire and loose red wire to attach to the USB board. Red goes to positive, black goes to negative. At this point, you should have one loose black wire left over and a black wire coming off of your USB board. We're going to be using both of those wires to attach to our switch. I find it helpful to make a slight hook with the end of my wire to go through the small hole on each of the switch legs. Get them in there and then we'll solder them next. Use your helping hand to hold the switch in place and then add a little bit of heat and a little bit of solder. It doesn't take much. This is actually the one area where you can really screw up soldering because the switch is mostly plastic and too much heat makes the switch melt. So just count to three when you add heat, add some solder, and be done really quickly with it. If you hadn't guessed, we now have one random red wire coming off of our USB circuit and a black wire coming off of our switch. Those go into the out positive and out negative on our lithium charge controller board. So just as before, we're going to be soldering those into place, and that should actually complete all of our electronics. As before, it's really important that the pads and the wires are completely separate from each other. So make sure the wires are pointed away from the other pads, and that if there's any random loose strings hanging around, that they're not coming in contact with the other pads. Again, we don't want to make a short circuit, because that would be bad. You're not going to start a fire or anything, but it would just be bad to have a short circuit. At this point, your entire circuit should look just like this. The solar cell going to the front positive and negative next to the USB port. The battery going to B positive and B negative on the lithium charge controller board. The red wire from a USB circuit going to the out positive on the board. And the black wire coming off of your switch should be going to the out negative on that board. The last thing to do is to assemble your box. Use some screws and nuts as well as your wooden pieces to assemble almost all your entire box. It should look just about like this when you're done. Put one piece of double-sided foam tape under each of the ports on your box. We'll be applying the USB circuit and lithium charge controlling board to those spots in a moment. Before we stick any parts down, we're going to get the switch in place. Use the two nuts to firmly secure the switch into the panel mount. Make sure it's nice and snug in place and doesn't wiggle around in any weird motions or degrees. Remove the protective layer off of the top of the double-sided foam tape and stick the two circuit boards down. The USB circuit goes on the larger of the two cutouts, whereas the lithium charge controller goes through the smaller of the two cutouts. Make sure you use your finger to press down and get the parts on there nice and secure. We don't want them to wiggle around when people are plugging things in or out of those different circuit boards. We're going to use a third piece of double-sided foam tape to secure the battery in place. We have that nice big area on the right side of our box where the battery should fit perfectly. First put the tape down, then remove the other protective layer from the tape, and then stick the battery in place. Again, press down firmly to make sure it doesn't shift or move around or cause any trouble. There should be plenty of room for everything to fit on the inside. Use remaining screws and nuts to screw the top of the box in place. Use one to two pieces of double-sided foam tape to secure the solar panel onto the top of the box. Put the tape on the solar panel first, and then apply it to your box. It makes things a whole lot easier. Before you start charging or using the device, please note that typically lithium batteries have a very low charge when being shipped or bought new. There's a good chance you need to charge up the internal battery before doing anything else. Use the micro USB port to do a quick charge from any USB power source. Once you're done, you can plug in your gadget, flip the switch, and you have power. 
I hope you had a fun time building this. If you have any questions or issues, please check out our instructions on browndoggadgets.com. Thanks.